Okay, this is video number seven on how to disassemble and reassemble your Honda engine. Okay, it's a good habit to get into whenever you're doing engine work, like let's say you remove the cylinder head, to put a piece of uh, cloth over it when you're not using it. So that way the dust and dirt doesn't get down in there. Uh, you never want to be assembling a, an engine with somebody next to you, like sweeping a broom or something like that. Uh, that would be bad. Uh, potentially bad news for your engine. You want to keep it as clean as possible. <clears throat> okay, this right here is your head gasket. Uh, once you remove a cylinder head, um, you cannot reuse these. You've got to replace them uh, in the automotive world. For all intents and purposes, though, we're going to pretend that this is a new one because this engine is not going to run again. Okay? And the reason is because it crushes down and it won't spring back, basically. All right. When you look at your cylinder head, okay, you're going to see two ports right here. This port is where the is air ports from the, um, I'm sorry, it's where the, uh, on the carburetor side, and that's going to go right here, okay. Let's put that on here like so, sit down gently. Okay, now, these are 12 by 125 pitch, so I was looking on here, I didn't see anything for, I see it says cylinder head cover, but I'm assuming that means a rocker, um, the, the valve cover, so we're going to go with an M8, it's 15 foot pounds of torque. Okay. Right, when, you when you tighten your cylinder heads down, I want you to just do what I'm doing right here, okay? Don't want to finger tight at first. And notice how I went from this corner to this corner. Now I'm going over here. Okay, we're just going to go like this. When you're working on putting cylinder heads in cars, they may have you do like 10 foot pounds for each one the first pass. Then the next pass might be like 90 foot pounds. And then the next pass may be like an additional 90. Or they may say you need to go uh, 45 degrees. So. Just pay attention to what the workshop manual says on how to do it. All right, so we're at 15 foot pounds. Okay, that one. Now I'm going to this corner. That one's good. Now I'll come back over here. That one. I'm going to go through and check them one more time just to make sure everybody's still tight. Okay. So, the reason I went from corner to corner is kind of like the same reason when you're putting on a tire. You want the thing to sit on the flatten down on there flush. If not, if you just start with this one and like work your way around, you're going to distort this head, especially this thing being made of aluminum. Aluminum, aluminum is a lighter metal than like cast iron or steel. Okay. Next thing we want to do, I think I'm going to put these little guys back in here and here. And let's see if I can again. These are M8s by 125s. I'll check the workshop manual. Okay, I don't see anything there, so we're going to go back with 15 foot pounds with these. Okay.
You get your 12 millimeter, you're going to need a deep socket for these. Okay. I'm going to tighten these down. Okay. Now the next thing I want to do, I want to get my push rod out. I'm going to put my push rod. And if you look, it's got to sit in this little uh, cup in there. It, it can't, you can't just throw it in there. It's got to sit in this certain little cup. You'll see what I'm talking about once you get in there. Going to line it up. And it's a little bit tricky to do. There's just this little area it sits in, right in there. I don't know how well you can or can't see that. Okay, I get my other little push rod out. Okay, so you'll see this little hole that this thing needs to fit down in there. You need to make sure it's put on there nice and square. All right. <clears throat> next thing I want to do is I want to install my rocker arms, okay? So you look, this thing's got a little dimple right here. That's for that push rod to sit in. So that little indentation is for the push rod. I'm going to put this one here. I'm going to take the other one and put this one here. And then I've got this nut right here i got to put on, okay? And this goes down with this side facing down, this tapered side. I'm just doing this by hand right now. Okay. Do the same thing to the other one. I'm just doing them finger tight, not even going really all that tight with them. Just trying to get them on there, so they won't fall off. All right, what we're going to do next. We're going to actually adjust adjust the uh, the valves, and that's going to be the next video because I'm running out of time in this one. Uh, make sure that you don't lose your two little locking nuts there that go on top of this after we get this tightened down. Um, stay tuned to the next video, and we'll learn how to adjust the valves. Um, with the feeler gauge. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know.